Hello everybody from Leeds and Leeds bus station right behind me here. Oh, I'll tell you what, that was a bit of a stressful journey up here thanks to uh, Transport for Wales and the Trans Pennine Express cancelling their trains and delays and whatnot. But I'm here now and I'm going to be taking the Transdev Blazefield Coastline 0840 service all the way from here over to Whitby. 84 miles, um, around about 3 hours and 25 minutes. Now in 2018 it was voted as Britain's most scenic bus route. Uh, should we go and see if it lives up to its billing? I think we should. Come with me and I will see you on the bus. Right, so here we go. Leeds City Bus Station opened in 1938 and rebuilt in 1963 and then again in 1996 to facilitate the relocation of National Express coaches from the old coach station at Wellington Street. Now you've got a lot of stands here, 34 to be precise. Our bus, the 840 to Whitby bus station, would be departing at 11.15 from stand 21, as shown on this large departure board here. And as you can see, I only had 8 minutes at this point before it would indeed depart. You've got ticket and information desks in the building, along with a Costa and a Greggs, and pay-to-use toilets. Uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I think spending money to take a pee these days is becoming much more prevalent. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Fortunately, I'd already been, as I didn't have much time before the bus arrived. I'd already stocked up on food supplies as well. Absolutely essential for a journey of this length and time. And yeah, before long, the bus pulled onto stand. BT66 MVW, a Volvo B5TL Wright Eclipse Gemini 3. The first thing to note, we had a wheelchair user on this journey and they boarded first by means of the onboard ramp facility, which was good. And then I joined the queue of about a dozen people waiting to depart. Now let's have a single to Whitby, please. All the way. Yeah, all the way today, yeah. Yeah, let me find where it's quite a There we go. Bargain, thank you very much. So a nice friendly welcome from the driver. I paid by contactless card, but cash is also accepted. Oh, and I'll tell you how much I paid so much. in a short while. A quick look at the downstairs area here, where you have mainly double seats on either side, with a few lateral seats and wheelchair space to the front. Uh, but as per usual, I was heading upstairs. And I was pleased to find that despite being way back in the queue, the front row was completely empty. I found a seat, uh, but before sitting down, just had a quick look back along the top deck, uh, where the one thing that stood out immediately for me were the windows in the roof. Now, these extended pretty much the full length of the bus, and yeah, along with the blue beige colour scheme, it gave the whole interior a very bright and airy feel. Whew, made it. Um, yeah, first impression's great. I've got a front seat, um, which is, um, yeah, it's painted in that because I'm going to be on this bus for nearly three and a half hours. Uh, so uh, yeah, a really friendly bus drive as well, uh, so yeah, great first impressions, a um, couple of minutes before we leave, so let's go. So we reversed off stand right on time, uh, joining a queue of other buses fighting their way out and onto the busy streets of Leeds. And yeah, there was quite a bit of traffic, but overall I didn't find it too bad getting out of the city. Now the bus did call several times at local bus stops and I got the impression that most passengers, or certainly the ones on the lower deck, were just making short journeys to and from the centre. So hopefully I won't offend anybody by saying that this part of the route is not really the most scenic, um, but it is a good opportunity to take a look at the interior of the bus and see what it's got to offer. Let's start with the seat itself. Uh, the headrest area is really well padded and very comfortable. A nice moquette pattern I thought. And you've got the Transdev Blazefield logo on this little tag here, which looked quite smart. A good padding along the sides and the bottom of the seat itself felt nicely padded too. And here's a side view of the front seats and the airline style seating behind. Now, I tried both the legroom and yeah, unless you've got unusually long legs, uh, I don't think you'll have any issues in either, to be honest. Uh, you've got USB connectivity on the seat backs or on the front panel here. And, yeah, importantly, every socket that I tried worked. And like I said before, the general interior was bright and accentuated by these retro posters on the ceiling along both sides. It actually felt like you were going on an adventure and 
you know, that's what travel should all be about, right? It shouldn't matter where you're going. Getting there is all about the excitement of the journey and the anticipation of your final destination. Well, that's what I think, anyway. Uh, talking about where you're going, the route details and other advisory messages are displayed above the top windscreen. And we were approaching York at this point, the only major city en route. I had to laugh, uh, as soon as we went past the Welcome to York sign, we hit a massive traffic jam. But I reckon traffic conditions like these are factored into the timetable. And it was a lovely ride through the city streets of York. Uh, there really are some terrific views of the old city walls. And by the time we'd reached York Railway Station, which itself is a fabulous building, uh, we were still pretty much bang on schedule. After picking up several passengers at York, we departed, uh, travelling through the city walls this time, towards our next major stop, Moulton. We're about two hours into the journey now, and uh, we're just coming up to a place called Malton, um, which is where the, the service diverges. So you have the 843 going across to Scarborough, and we stay on the 840 here, which takes us up to Whitby. So it's about another hour and 25 minutes to run, and this next leg, the final leg I guess you could call it, it's going to be the most scenic uh, of the lot when it takes us over the North Yorkshire Moor. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't been up here for years and years. So yeah, expect some good views. The weather's not too bad at the moment. It's staying dry. That's the most important thing, isn't it? So uh, yeah, hopefully some great views to come. Right, so here we were just coming into Malton, North Yorkshire. Population about 5,000. And if you have a dog, um, you should maybe consider coming here. Now, when I say consider because in 2018-19 it was named as the most dog friendly town in the UK by the Kennel Club no less um, but uh, the year after 2020 it was only named as one of the most dog friendly towns so I don't know what happened there maybe somebody got bitten um, <laughs> anyway that aside um, it's also been described as the food capital of Yorkshire and uh, one of Britain's best places to live I'd live here and I don't even have a dog the bus station stroke garage is sandwiched here between the lovely River Derwent and the railway station. And like I said, if you've decided to go to Scarborough at this point, then you really need to get off and catch the 843 service, because we're leaving Malta now and heading for the North Yorkshire Moors, by far the most scenic part of the journey. Now before we get there, there's just enough time to have a look at a few of the other features on this bus. Now the keen-eyed amongst you may have noticed that there are two sets of table seats on the upper deck, one on each side. I went and had a brief look and uh, yeah, here you've got proper plug sockets as well as USB and wireless charging. I love the ice cream cone table too, it's quirky isn't it? You've got good leg room beneath the table and there's a rubbish bin opposite. Now worth pointing out that there are no toilet facilities on this bus. There is free Wi-Fi however and it worked quite well. I loaded up quickly. I was even able to get live streamed on YouTube, uh, but yeah, who wants to watch that when you've got some absolutely amazing scenery coming up? Uh, we follow a caravan for a while, uh, making a quick diversion to the Flamingo Land theme park, uh, before we then head into what I think is the prettiest village on the route, Thornton Le Dale, a population about 1700. Uh, for me, uh, this was where the landscape really started to change. You've got the lovely village centre here with the stream running alongside the street and the bus then has to negotiate this kind of village green before stopping to pick up passengers for the next leg. It really is quite tight for the coastline of buses to negotiate, especially when you've got two of them. Right, enough anticipation, 
let's head out and up onto the evocative moors. Enjoy the scenery with me, and I'll talk to you again when we get to another lovely village, Goatland. Wow, I tell you what, that part of the journey there was so worth the trip, wasn't it? From the high-tech early warning radar system of RAF Filindales up on Snod Hill there, all the way over the bleak and barren moors down to the North Yorkshire Moors Heritage Railway in Goatland Village, I can see now why the 840 service was voted Britain's most scenic bus route. I loved it. And what a bargain too. I paid just £2 for this epic 84 mile journey thanks to the government funded Help for Household scheme which at the time of this video capped most single journey bus fares in England at just £2 up to the end of June 2023. Is there a longer single bus route out there you can do for just £2? Well, if so, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to try it. You will notice here that the bus turns around at Goatland and heads back the way it came, slowly climbing the 1 in 4 or 25% bank back up onto the moors. It does have to work pretty hard in this latter part of the journey. And then back on the A169 main road we head towards the notorious Blue Bank, uh, which is a one mile long 1 in 5 20% descent into Slate's village. You can tell it's steep, can't you, when you get these low gear and escape lane signs along the side of the road. Uh, 
Now the other thing to mention, notice how quiet and smooth the bus is. Now, okay, we're out on the open road now, but yeah, I thought the ride quality was particularly good. Helped by the comfortable seats as well, no doubt. And all in all, this is a really nice bus. Though, I've got to be honest, it's not quite as smart, in my opinion, as the X43 Witchway service between Manchester and Burnley. I'll link to that video here, and yeah, maybe you can give me your opinion in the comments below. Now we're running alongside the River Esk now, just coming into Russ Warp, which itself is on the outskirts of Whitby. I must say, it was a beautiful approach into the town. I'd never been to Whitby before, and I was really interested to see what it was like. Now the bus station itself is right next to the railway terminus and only a short walk to the harbour. And we pulled up at the bus stop on the road just across from it and yeah, I must say after the longest bus journey I'd ever taken in my life I was feeling really good and like I said that's a testament to the ride quality of the bus and the overall comfort of the interior. Cheers mate. Anyway, after disembarking the bus, it was lovely to smell the sea air. Oh, I took a minute or two just to sum up my thoughts on the last three and a half hours or so. Well, I'll tell you what, um, just got into Whitby now, um, a little bit behind schedule, uh, about 10 minutes late, all in all, but uh, that was fantastic. And, you know, I, I wasn't really thinking that much about it up, up until we came to, uh, well, probably Thornton Liddell, which was after uh, Moulton. And then the North Yorkshire Moors, it just opened out and there was some fantastic scenery up there. So I can understand why it's touted as Britain's most scenic uh, bus route. Absolutely brilliant. That's last part, that last 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, yeah, I've had a good, a good trip overall. Can't go wrong for two pound, can you? Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please comment below and leave a like and maybe consider subscribing as well. I'd really appreciate it if you would, and I will see you on another adventure soon. Cheers for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.